For the millions of tourists who flock to Jamaica every year, the island is a tropical paradise. From its warm Caribbean waters to its magical sunsets. The island's spirit is perhaps best reflected in its beloved music, which preaches peace and brotherhood. But for most Jamaicans, life is far from easy. The poverty rate here is high, and the job prospects, especially for the young, are low. The nation's slums are violent places, giving Jamaica one of the highest murder rates in the world. And this combination of crushing poverty and violence serves as the fertile soil that gives root to those pernicious lottery scams we are investigating tonight. It's perhaps not surprising that the center of scamming activity in Jamaica is the area surrounding the famed resorts of Montego Bay, hillside towns where mostly poor inhabitants are on the outside looking in at sun-drenched playgrounds where wealthy tourists frolic. <laughs> we traveled to Montego Bay in order to get a better understanding of what's driving the Jamaican lottery fraud. We wanted to search out the man who called himself Joe Johnson, who had scammed Pat Coffin up in Maine. Jamaican authorities told us they had a sense of who he was, but they were not yet ready to make an arrest. They did agree to take us into the world in which men like Joe Johnson operate. We were escorted through the crowded streets of Montego Bay by an elite Jamaican police task force. This unit's sole mission is combating lottery fraud. They are known as JOT, which stands for Jamaican Operations Linked to Telemarketing. Our destination was the unit's undisclosed headquarters for a briefing. You won't be seeing these officers' faces because they work undercover and we agreed to protect their identities. But we spoke to one of the victims uh, in the U.S. and the scammer had used the name Joe Johnson. Have you run across this man, Joe Johnson? We got the information and we have been working at it. Uh -huh. That's the most I can tell you. We can say confidently that we have reached a stage where we can identify this person. Mm -hmm and we are in a position where we are basically monitoring based on what the, the IP address and the intelligence is showing. But monitoring scammers isn't easy. These criminals use disposable cell phones and laptops to make their phone calls. The cops told us that many of them are young and adept at using technology to stay ahead of the law. Well, we've just come out of the, quote, undisclosed location. Obviously, extremely low profile headquarters of the unit. Lottery scams have fueled a crime wave across the region. And as we headed up into the hills around Montego Bay, our guides warned us that this is a place where you have to watch your back. Jeeps full of Jamaican soldiers came along to help protect the operation. I wouldn't dare you to come here alone. Yes. <laughs> I would the cesspool where crime is concerned. Yeah. The cops said our caravan was almost certainly being watched and they pointed out ditches on the side of the road where criminals could hide with high-power weapons. They told us these neighborhoods are infested by gangs that are killing each other over what are known as lead lists, names and phone numbers of potential victims in the United States that scammers can likely manipulate. This section of Granville is known as Pit 4. You have a gang that is here. Basically, that gang is financed from large scams. You like those guys sitting there? That's what they do in the day. They just sit there and then they do scam call people to stuff abroad. stuff. Make millions. Yeah. The police said they had a very good idea of who many of the scammers are. These criminals don't tend to hide their wealth. A lot of scammers migrate to these communities because they have the money to purchase a building and they build some huge Houses inside here. We saw garish walled fortresses next to modest homes and construction sites. The authorities who investigate lottery scams know these addresses well. Serious so one? This is not legitimately made. Yes. It's not for rent. Because yes. they're afraid. Yes. What happened to the people who were in it? Scared. We do not know where in Jamaica they are or if they are abroad, but 
since we step up the operations, they have all run away. But it's typical of the kind of houses they build. <laughs> right. Money comes easy, so they just build and keep building. That big house oh, up there. This house, huh? On our police tour, one particular scammer mansion caught our eye. We got out to take a look. The police explained that they had previously raided this house for lottery fraud. Hello? They were able to arrest the owner for bribery, Hello? but he is currently out on bail. The police told the man at the front door that we wanted to talk to the owner of the house. Um, I think he's not going to come out because he's like that. Because he, he can see us coming. He has cameras all over. The police then tried a different approach to get the owner to come out. This is an opportunity that can help him. So go and let him know that. So he can come and speak to the press, the foreign press. Spending the day with the Jolt task force was in many ways an exercise in mixed emotions. On the one hand, I couldn't help but be impressed with these officers' knowledge and professionalism. But I also got a sense that these cops were facing an uphill battle. At least for now, it seems the scammers are winning. It reminded me of a time in the United States not so long ago when major mafia crime bosses, well known to the authorities, lived flashy lifestyles and largely walked free. These thoughts were in my mind when our escorts took us to a place they thought we would find interesting. Uh, this is a zone where a group of scammers operate from. Yeah, you can come out here and let's take pictures. Yes. Okay. To show you, this is one of our big. You can interview this gentleman if you so desire. Hello. Sorry to disrupt your lunch. Great fun. <laughs> Looks good though. Tastes good too. What's your name? Where do you live? Right there. Right here? That's your house? My family house. Where do you work? Hold on. Yo! Nice ring. Yeah. Nice house. Family's house. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an American journalist, and I'm working yeah, on a story. I got, of, the, I got that information from yeah. the <laughs> well, Thank you. And you know, we're working on a story about the scammers. Do oh. you know anything about them? Well, I hear a lot on the news every day. Well, uh, are there any in this neighborhood? I could be mm -hmm. Well, I ask this respect, but you're not one, are you? <laughs> no, no. You know why I ask? Big house, nice ring, it's not, good car. It's not that big, it's a family house. Mm -hmm. I told you, my friend, mm -hmm. I went to jail for a lot of weed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. OK, we're going to look around and let you get back to your lunch. No Thank problem. you. Okay. Thank you. The police tell me that, uh, uh -huh. that they think you. you are involved with the scamming. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> That's why I explained to you I've been to prison for a lot of weed. So they can check my records. Mm -hmm. Well, if we may just talk man to man. No. Mm -hmm. You have no, expensive no, sunglasses. No, no, very nice ring. All right, this sunglass personal is for a girl that slept over. Uh -huh. Well, in that case, congratulations. <laughs> okay. Think. And you live in a big house? Show me that it. And the police tell me that you are involved in this camera business. You know what the scamming does. It takes money from mm -hmm. hard-working people or retired people, I people like your news. grandmother or something. Mm -hmm. And you would understand if I said, you tell me you're not involved, right? Definitely not. If you were, I'd have no respect for that. I respect you as a person, as mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. But I can't respect taking money from grandmothers retired people. I understand. Well, luckily for me, I have your respect, man. Right? Mm -hmm. 
I want to make clear, there's no doubt in your mind he's involved. There's absolutely no doubt. And from what you have, would have seen there, he's showing you the premises and says family premises. He's the one that has pumped the money into that place that you're looking at. But you're telling me he is a Mr. Big. He is. He is. He, he, he has tremendous wealth from Lachie Scamming. I can tell that for a fact. But there's another fact. Just because the police say they know he's a scammer doesn't mean they have the evidence to arrest him and keep him behind bars. I sat down with Jamaica's Assistant Commissioner of Police, Carl Williams, who oversees the Joke Task Force, to discuss the issue. Well, first of all, Mr. Williams, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. And I also recognize that it's not your favorite subject. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Well, to someone in the United States, which you know well, you've been to school there, you know our country very well, to someone in the United States is saying, you know, if, if the Jamaicans really wanted to do away with this problem, mm, they could do it. You would say what? I'll, I'll say that we will do away with this problem. Um, we have a very dedicated bunch of guys working for us now who are um, giving their all they go to work every day with the sole objective to get rid of scamming. Williams gave us video of raids conducted by Jolt. There are unbelievable stacks of cash. Officials told us that these criminals have so much money, they sometimes burn it for fun. And then there are these, the highly coveted lead lists, countless names and addresses of American citizens. Here, they're from Texas and Louisiana. This is what law enforcement tells us they find behind the walls of those scammer mansions. Proof that over the last few years, they have begun to make a dent in combating lottery fraud. Well, over that period, the last three or four years, about how many arrests have been made? Uh, well, just in the last year alone, we have made about uh, 300 plus arrests and um, a number of people have been charged for lottery scam related offenses and others have been charged for other offenses that are not necessarily uh, related to lottery scamming but offenses that were detected during the course of our law enforcement operations. Much as the uh, legendary American gangster Al Capone was eventually caught and convicted on income tax yes. evasion. That's what you're talking about. Yes, yes. But of those 300 arrests, you said over the last year, I believe, 300 yes, arrests, yes. how many were convicted of uh, telemarketing and lottery fraud? We've had about two persons convicted for money laundering. And um, we've had a number of others who have been arrested and charged for unlawful possession of property. But I think it would strike anybody watching and listening that you had 300 arrests, but not nearly that many convictions. We, we, we have had convictions uh, other than the, the money laundering convictions that I've told you about. Williams tells us that one of the problems the police face is that current Jamaican law hasn't given them the tools they need to lock scammers up. That's something we heard from almost everyone with whom we talked. Our greatest problem now in fighting a lot of scamming is legislation. We don't have the legislation. Balford Henry has been a journalist for decades. He covers government for the Jamaica Observer newspaper. It's like a revolving door. The police go out and they hold on to people and they say they're scammers and they put them in jail and they call their lawyers and by tomorrow they have to let them go. Because what charge are you going to hold them on? If you said fraud is probably the only charge that they can hold them on. But fraud is a charge in Jamaica, you pay a fine. If you can't pay the fine, you go to jail. But if you can't pay the fine, you don't have a problem. So, and, and it's, you know, it's not a, a charge that means that you wouldn't get bail. <laughs> You'd get bail easily. But the Jamaican government says it is now trying to change that. We are strengthening the arsenal that law enforcement will have to battle this. Peter Bunting is Jamaica's Minister of National Security. An investment banker by training, he has been in his post for a little over a year. Why has it taken so long to get laws in place that would allow the government to put these scammers in jail, in prison, and keep them there for a long time? I can't speak with any authority um, to the previous administration, but I'd say in the last year since we've taken over, 
we have made this an urgent priority. We had a study last year. It identified some of the gaps in existing legislation. One new piece of legislation will allow scam victims in the United States to testify via video. We hope this will encourage people to come forward, that they will not have to travel to a court in Jamaica to give evidence. Bunting also says that new laws will directly target lottery scams. And, and these new offenses will have quite severe penalties. You'll be able to be put in prison for up to 20 years. And it allows inferences to be drawn, for example, by just having possession of lead lists with you know hundreds or thousands of names of potential victims, typically, as I said, in the US. As these efforts become law, it remains to be seen how much they will be able to rein in the criminals. Because the victims are in the United States, it seems clear that U.S. law enforcement also needs to be fully engaged. Some effort is already underway. The JOLT task force partners with multiple American law enforcement agencies. You know, the Postal Inspection Service have been investigating these types of crimes for years. Greg Campbell is a U.S. postal inspector, and one of his agents is stationed in Jamaica to target the scammers. You know, we want to send a message to them that whether it's in the United States or whether it's in Jamaica or any other country, that we will, we will work with tenacity uh, to, to pursue, work with other governments, to go after those type of people that are going to victimize American citizens. The perpetrators believe they can hide from prosecution because they're in a separate country from the victims. Vance Callender is a senior official in the Department of Homeland Security Investigations. Now based in Washington, D.C., he helped create the JOLT Task Force in 2009 when he was stationed in Jamaica, and he's been working to combat scamming ever since. Is this problem getting better or worse? Uh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Absolutely. Calendar says it's important to understand the hurdles a relatively poor country like Jamaica has in tackling a problem as complicated and hard to prosecute as lottery fraud. They're a developing country. They lack a lot of the resources that a major country like the U.S. might have access to. But they're using what they have in, in a fantastic way. It's just, uh, it's just a little bit slower. He also suggested that the United States itself could do more in making sure that the cases of American victims are handled correctly. The first year of JOLT, we identified very easily 36,000 victims. We do, you know, there isn't a law enforcement agency big enough to open 36,000 cases you know, in one crime alone. We have to group those uh, victims. We need a database and a system that can do that. We don't have that at the present The U.S. does not have a centralized uh, international fraud center. Why is that? Uh, I'm not sure. As we reached this point in our reporting, I couldn't tell whether I should be optimistic or discouraged. On the one hand, officials in both the United States and Jamaica told me they are taking the issue more seriously. On the other hand, the problem of lottery fraud and scamming seems as pervasive and intractable as ever. This was on my mind when I met up again with Jamaica's National Security Minister, Peter Bunting, at a police station in Montego Bay. If someone said to you, Mr. Minister, I understand what you're trying to do. We applaud what you're trying to do. But these scammers are like termites. They're, they're not everywhere, but they're in a lot of different places. And you said to yourself, they're hard to catch. And I said, I can't be as optimistic as you are. You would say what? I would say I have no alternative but to be optimistic. <laughs> um, it is, you know, something that we have to succeed at and we are going to succeed at. And I am really aware that I think we have the right people in place. We're putting all the tools necessary to eradicate the scam. So you think you can exterminate the termites? <laughs> I think so. And, you know, and even if we don't get every last one in the first round, <laughs> You know, we'll keep applying the treatment. When our investigation continues, fighting against the corrosive culture of scamming. So stay here with us.